Welcome to Thought Cops, the only podcast for every week we talk about what's outraging the internet. We let you be the judge. We let you be the jury. We even let you be the executioner, too, in the court of public opinion. I'm Officer Kevin, and with me is Officer Grant. The executioner, the jury, and the judge. What the fuck did I just say? All three of those. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Welcome to the show, y'all. That's you, the listeners, the uh, those three things. We're coming off to a hot start here. Like usual. Like usual, but let's thank our guest from last week, lest we forget. Dave Pretendo, otherwise known by his uh, alter ego, Sephiroth Sword 57. Thank you for calling into the show from Sweden. We do appreciate you. Every time we talk to him, I'm always like surprised that he does that character because he always comes off as such a normal, chill guy, and then he plays like... <laughs> the most irritating yeah. character ever but it's hilarious he does it, such a good job with it it's impressive seeing him like flip that switch though yeah. just really it's, just like, it's go, like two different people go into the voice yeah. yeah it's great and we got a brand new guest this week new to the family because like I, it's like i always say grant when you're here your family gonna get sued for that i will not let's welcome our guest this week larry sorry let me just retake Bl- that again is it blidner <laughs> yeah <laughs> Let me just squint to see a little closer. Um, we're we're leaving that in. We're ta- take take two. Yeah. Take two, Zwick. Yeah. Let's welcome our new guest to the family, Larry Blightner from That Larry Show. What's up, Larry? I have no goddamn idea. I'm kept public. You guys can tell me. <laughs> really. What do I know? And that's what the show is. That's what we're here for. We want to inform the public with our little knowledge of the world around us very little well, the public very wants to minimal. know they do so i i remember the first time i listened to your show and it was very much like uh it was like listening to am radio except i could hear it because there was no static which is great but y- you actually used to work in am radio right yes yeah uh did you have like a couple shows i was looking a little into it um like what what types of stuff were you doing I uh, I had a, a show in L.A. I was co-hosting with a woman that had been a uh, network news anchor, and that was kind of a, a weird thing. She was she was a little bit to the left of Joe Stalin, <laughs> and she also had made a you know her career reading a teleprompter. So she had a very set idea of where things should go. Collins would happen, or something would. Something would click. She never wanted to veer off that script. It was it was odd. And you would just come in. You would uh, break her down. Let her know, <laughs> let her know what the. <laughs> you know, it was it was just it was very strange. It was it was a very weird uh, uh, experience because they had done something in New York as well, and uh, mm-hmm. that was much more traditional and free form and so forth. But but that was that was an oddball. Because you know, we would get into a, a topic and things would get it really hot and people would be phoning and so forth. And she just go, Okay, well now we're gonna talk about uh, senatorial races. Oh man, I'm I like, love well, that. What the fuck are you going with that for? You know, it's, it's I, I love when people are like they have a set yeah. idea of what they're going to talk about and then like you break the script and it's just like I uh, computer overload. Don't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Let's throw out a commercial. Yeah. And then you've also written a number of uh, books, and you also, like, produced a TV show, right? Yes. Larry, would you say that AM radio was the original podcast? <laughs> that's, that's a damn good question. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it, all, it all comes from that. Nothing is new. Whatever it is, it's just, it's just 
repainted, reformatted, whatever. You know, it's pr- probably some fucking pharaoh standing on the top of the Giza pyramid, screaming through a megaphone five thousand years ago, and uh, here we are. And that was the original podcast. Mm, yes, that was the in a lot of ways the original Thought Cops. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was a pharaoh at the top of a pyramid screaming. And, uh, high rule, uh, high rules, Hi- hieroglyphs. <laughs> that was hieroglyphs. <laughs> fictional. <laughs> Yes, well, hieroglyphs was, were the uh, hieroglyphs were the original uh, shit posts. That's right. Oh, there you so, go. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so, Larry, tell us a little bit about that Larry show. Oh dear, uh, we're now in the hundred and fifty third episode. I just posted. Wow. I never thought oh, it would fantastic. This long. It's really been kind of yeah. surprising, you know. And it, it, we just had our, our second birthday. On the thirteenth. Oh, happy birthday! Thank you. So we posted the first episode, which was which was Charlie Brown's assisted suicide. I fun. remember that one. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. So uh, you know, it's it's evolved a little bit over time. You find out what works and what doesn't, and what lights your jets and what you know puts them out. <clears throat> and um, we have a a spinoff show we're doing every sunny uh, Sitter Sunday, and that's getting some pretty good traction and reaction. So it's all good. A lot of fun. Cool. And yeah, I, I definitely uh, we I feel like we cover a lot of like similar topics a lot. Um, every time I look at like your show notes and stuff, it's like it, it's hard. It's hard not to talk about all of the stuff that's happening in the world. When the it news just, these days. It, just, it's, <laughs> it hits you from 20 different angles. Yeah. So we're glad to have you on. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And I, I dig your show. I like you guys are doing a great job, and obviously you're oh, thanks, things going man. well. And, Too kind. And I feel I've been you know terrific company guest wise. I mean, you know, La Kembra oh, and uh, Brianna Murphy, and wow, good for you guys. <laughs> um, oh, thank, thank you, you. It's been fun. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we're actually we're coming up on our uh, two year episode mark soon. and a two year mark soon mm-hmm. after that. Hey, our kids are about the same age. They should uh, play together. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost as annoying as when people say we're pregnant, right? Yeah. <laughs> the royal we, of course. Yeah, the royal we. The royal we. Are <clears throat> it's like, hey, oh, really, sir? Show me your ovaries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's get right to it. Uh, yeah. Two minutes of hate. This, of course, is the segment of the show where we blanket punish people who. Uh, annoy us irritate us the things that we see online every day because we're always glued to our phones we see this kind of poison every single day so let's what we say here in the show is let's do something about it right yeah let's throw these creeps in jail yeah so grant what do you got i don't like ted cruz uh beard apologists okay have you seen this i i've seen his beard can you elaborate on I just keep seeing posts that are like Ted Cruz has a beard and it's not bad, and it's like oh, why? Are, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Why are you telling me this? We, I don't, I don't care what your opinion is on Ted Cruz's beard or lack thereof. Just this that, is completely irrelevant to me. That, that, absolutely. I saw a uh, there was a. a I, at the gym, there was uh, CNN playing on one of the TVs, and it was like Ted Cruz and Paul Ryan and one other guy, and it was like Lincoln's beard legacy lives. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, why is this a topic? Good God! Can we get back to the issues? No, we can't because like nobody can, nobody, can, nobody can decide on the issues. So it's just like, oh, this guy grew a beard. That's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, like the public just becomes so fixated on any salt and pepper beard that enters the zeitgeist. Oh, Steve Carell grew a beard, and it is everything. I think maybe we're all just looking for like a bridge to agree with each other on. Is that it? I don't think. Or yeah, yeah. I don't think we can agree on politics anymore. So we have to like good beard, bad beard. What's our? What's our? What's the over under on Donald Trump's hair? It's something safe. What, yeah. What can we all agree on? I don't, I don't even think Donald Trump's hair is a safe topic. But no, it's not. Like You're a, right. A lesser, a lesser figure like Ted, Ted Cruz, Cruz or something yeah. in his beard. You know, something. Something fun, I just keep right? seeing right. stuff about it, and it's like, I, I don't want to see anything about his beard. Great, he has one. Fine. Yep. Does he still have one, or did he, he shave it? He still has one, okay. as far as I know. We'll keep you posted. Uh, <laughs> stay tuned every week for Ted Cruz Beard News. That's right. Uh, cr- a hashtag Cruz Beard Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in every week. We'll, uh, we'll tell you yay or nay if it's still there. Yeah, that's, that's my punishment, too. 
I'm fine okay. with that. Yeah. We, so we suffer? We have to fucking cover this bullshit every week? Yeah. And to think, you know, his father killed JFK, and all they care about is his fucking beard. I mean, come on. The beard is a psyop. It is. Oh, so uh, Zwick put a picture of the beard in the chat here, yes. and uh, Long Neck McGee says, Zodiac Killer is looking good. <laughs> I almost forgot about the whole Zodiac Killer thing. I'm actually, as annoying as it kind of was, I am impressed at how far they took that. Well, he, he posts about it, too. Exactly. Yeah. He had to acknowledge it. He's become sentient. Yeah. The beard, the beard has oh, overtaken man. him. Anyway, uh, Larry, did you have anything you want to get off your chest here? Anything oh, you want to open up about? Hate-wise? Absolutely. Yes. Hate? Sure. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just so sick of Brandon Page and Zuckerberg and all these guys who are so concerned about my safety. You know, I've just fucking had it. The, the, the gin where I work out has kind of fucked up Wi-Fi. And every time mm-hmm. I try to connect to it, Chrome tells me, this isn't safe. You know, and then, no. <laughs> and I get this fucking billboard on my Samsung telling me, "Do you want to get back to safety?" And I just, I, I, I want to, I want to oh take a bazooka to Google headquarters. Here's your fucking safety. <laughs> you know, it's just, and it's yeah. everywhere, and all you see in Facebook and Twitter, and have a safe experience. I don't know anybody that's been been perforated. By, uh, by, by, by a flat screen, you know, and comments. I don't understand this. Well, how, how does safety even enter into it? It shouldn't. If, it, if anything, it's the opposite. The people who are warring you so much about safety are often the ones who are selling our information <laughs> and yes. watching our private messages exactly. and everything else. Yeah. So uh, I just, I, just I wish you could come up with some instant snappy retort to, that would just, just melt these fuckers' faces with all their, their safety concerns. I'm so tired of it. Really? Uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, got anything? Can you think of anything? I, I, the only thing, I, for some reason, I am thinking of is the annoying Discord messages. Mm. I know we're, we're, call, we're doing this call via Discord right now, and there's all these fucking obnoxious... What was it that said when we got Larry into the server today? It was uh, never going to give Larry up, never going to give... Never going to get... Give whatever whatever yeah, the right. song is, you know. Uh, no, you know just what like the song not, is. I think that instead of these, never gonna let Larry down. <laughs> these companies that are pretending to care about us, yes. that are pretending to watch our safety, should instead just spout memes and everything. Uh, Leroy Jenkins wants your social security number. <laughs> I don't think it's vindictive enough, though. I think like. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg have, has to look at his like phone screen and have it melt his face off yes. like uh, Indiana Arc- Jones Arc- style. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, there was a terrific uh, novel I read as a kid. I can't remember the name of it, but it was so brilliant. It was about some some maniac, some like evil genius maniac. And he figured out a way to pump like 200 amps through a phone line so that no one was safe. I mean, it was never safe to pick up your phone. If he if he wanted to fuck you and he dialed your number and you picked up your landline phone, you you were Dead. done. You were electrocuted. You know? That's a that's a good idea. It's a great yeah. idea. A and, concept, and we need yeah. something like that for social media. Something that something really really does make it dangerous so that suddenly safety is a factor. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I want. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, it's never for stuff that would actually make me feel more safe. It's always like, oh, the network connection spotty. Yeah. It's like I, w- I was flipping through through Twitter at work and like uh, someone tweeted out a picture of the uh, the riots that are going on in France. Mm. And there was just a, a clean image of a person whose hand was blown completely off. Ooh. And it's like, could you maybe... Could you maybe care about my safety a little bit more with this so I don't have to look at a stump, a bloody stump? Well, they want to make sure the stump loads properly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And what was the expression on the guy's face who was Mr. One Hand? Uh, he, had his, he had his head down. Oh, his head down. So, uh, it's yeah. probably burned in your mind at this point. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's pretty clearly, yeah. He described it pretty well. There were police yeah. around, yeah. Did he have a yellow Caught, vest? Like, one of those. No, but all the yellow vested people were around him, so... Uh. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what was going on. He caught like one of those flashbangs or whatever, and oh. it's just ingrained in my head, just that stump. Yeah. Oh, God. Make that safe for me. So Cover I'm that up. That. I don't want to see Cover that. Cover those stumps. <laughs> oh, that's dark. Blur them up. <laughs> just like, like Japanese porn. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, so I got my own two minutes of hate here. I got some fire. Shoot. I want to say this. Facebook friends list purges. <laughs> do you guys, Larry, do you still do you use Facebook at all? Sometimes. Or did you abandon I, you know, I don't spend a lot of time on any social media because it, it just pisses me off. But I do. Yeah. Yes. I, have, I have a page. It, and I mostly have it for the show, you know. Yeah. But there's this thing people are I I see I see it on Facebook. It I guess it started with MySpace or Facebook or whatever, but it's these uh friends list purges. Mm. Like for example, somebody will post a status. If you are seeing this status, congratulations. Yeah. You have survived my friends list purge. I'm trying to clean up my contacts and guess what? <laughs> I got rid of everybody who doesn't matter. Right. And it's like always like some whenever I see that, it's always I'm always like me? Really? <laughs> We haven't talked in 12 years, yes. and we didn't even get along then. Yeah. How did I survive the purge? Who fucking got cut? Yeah. You know what I do when I see those is I delete those people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, yeah, it's, it's also the sign of uh, somebody who's bordering on sociopathy. Like, what? why even announce this? Just oh, do yeah. it. Make it a clean cut. I don't like e these people aren't even going to know. That's right. That's the thing. They're just bragging to people. And it's like it, it's not a good look. Yeah. No. And at the, the other side of that, too, is when you get these these friend requests on any of them, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn, whatever. And it's from some somebody that you literally wish dead. You know, some fucking asshole <laughs> from your past that that rat fucked you on a job or whatever uh -huh. it was. And suddenly it's. Let's be friends, you know, and, and that's that's a big failing of all these platforms as well. There shouldn't be just decline. It, there should be a button that says, go fuck yourself. Go drown in your own vomit. You know, <laughs> that's with the response the, uh, I want to say. The voltage huh? as well. Uh, with the, the voltage that's the voltage. Through, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. The yeah. Wi-Fi and yeah. everything else. That's why you remember those Samsung phones that used to blew up. Oh, yeah. 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 Bring those They'd back. Yeah. People's yeah. pockets. <laughs> yes. It should be an option. Like in, in all the old spy movies, like the, the message would always self destruct at the end. Right. So That's true. Oh yeah, there you. we go. Yeah. A friend's request there, there's a punishment. A friend request that just self destructs <laughs> because that's what these people deserve. Yeah. Somebody who just you know, you make an innocuous profile, it's like Bill Harrison from Toledo, and then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, maybe I maybe I know this guy, maybe I don't know him, except Boom! Yeah. yeah. Phone blows the fuck up. Well, you know, yeah. maybe it's possible. I mean, wasn't that the whole thing with the whole the whole mystique of Tesla? That he could actually find a way to fling electrical power through the air without wires, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the cars because I'm a stupid millennial, but then I remember that the cars are named after an actual person that <laughs> actually did things. Yes. No, yeah. no, this is, we're not talking Musk, <laughs> but, but really, I mean, so if that yeah. was possible, and there are a lot of people who believe that he, he did that, um, mm -hmm. I guess there's the answer. There's, there's your way to make everybody's cell phone a, a death weapon. Yeah. You know, there you go. I give it a five years tops until we actually get that going. Good. Hurry. I'm sure, I'm sure like, the yeah. <laughs> hurry it up. I'm sure the Nazis like tried working on something like that in World War uh -huh. II. They had all sorts of weird experiments. That's true. Yeah, like, uh, what's his name? Um, I forget his name. but Hitler. Hi <laughs> <laughs> that Nazi. Adolf Hitler, that's it, yeah. <laughs> He's walkie-talkies that explode. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Hey, so let's move on here uh, yeah. to the uh, main attraction. If you haven't listened to Thought Cops before, every week we investigate the Internet's outrage-inducing news stories, and then we sentence each perpetrator to a cruel... And very often, unusual punishment. So, here we go. Let's, uh, let's sort of delve into this, like, Patreon debacle just a little bit. Uh, I sort of brought it up a little bit on the last show, and then we just, like, canned it because I didn't really know what I was talking about. Mm. Uh, but a lot of people have been sort of, uh, not pulling... Well, one person so far pulled their Patreon, Sam Harris... And then a couple people have been threatening to create a new Patreon with uh, hookers and blackjack. Um, <laughs> Larry, do you know about like all the stuff that's going on with Patreon oh, sure. and like uh, yeah. the deplatforming oh, yeah. stuff? Can you run that through for us? Oh, don't make Larry do the show. For I'm us. not making him do the show, but if he knows more about it than I do, no, you know, I, I don't think I don't know more about it than anybody else does, except maybe uh, Jack Conti, but. Um, you know, it, I think it's, the it start with Lauren Sutherland. She's yeah. the first. 
Yeah, we we talked about her. How, however, my, that was like less than a year ago. Or I, so. it, 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 it all blends together. It does. But uh, and then, you know, I it's, think, it's 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 horrible. I mean, it's all it's all this fucking Orwellian newspeak. And I remember him coming out with his his video to justify what he did uh, using the acronym M O B. What the fuck did that mean? Anybody remember something? What did that mean? What did M-O-B? Mother of all bombs. Huh? <laughs> Mother of all bombs. <laughs> Men on black. No, it was, it was like. It was like <laughs> I can't remember the, the, the exact words, but it was something like verifiable something behavior, ba- like bad behavior, oh, finger okay. shaming yeah. something, MOB, whatever the fuck. The B was behavior. And really, ah. I mean, that's that's what's going wrong with the entire fucking Internet is it's it's now run by Nurse Ratched, you know, by Montessori bitches <laughs> who want everybody to sit and play nice. And it's it's pretty much ruined. It really is. There's really only like what four websites at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean the the one thing that I will say, like, not even in Patreon's defense, but like just sort of as like a I don't know playing field evener. I don't I don't think I'm even using that right, but uh, I don't think it's pa- a word. Patreon doesn't make that much money compared to like Facebook and Twitter. No, so they're not as big of a company. They take a lot less of like a profit share than everybody else does so like in my mind they have less power but they are in charge of like people's money you know like we were talking about uh when monkey jones got pulled off of Mm -hmm. youtube uh last week Mm -hmm. like that's his job yeah like that's how he makes money they just took his paycheck away from him yeah now he has to worry about paying rent you know like that it's not as powerful as like facebook and twitter but it's important you know sure was to him yeah and um, the the thing cool. I think, especially with the Patreon thing, um, I think uh, what's it, Sar- Sargon of Akkad? Mm-hmm. I think was the the newest victim to everything. Yes, um, I'm fine with websites having terms and services and stuff like that, but you can definitely tell when they're applying it only like just to people that they don't like, and they don't apply it across the board, like. A lot of people brought up examples of people doing way worse things than him. I'm not a fan of his by any means, but it's like there's worse on Patreon than Sargon of Akkad. He just makes nine hour long videos about like the left or whatever, and I'm fine with that. But uh, it, it's like the unevenness that they apply some of those terms of service. And then someone leaked this thing where what's it? Jack Conti is the guy's name mm. where he's like, Oh, this not only applies to what people put <clears throat> on Patreon, but considering this is a, uh, like an accrual of, you know, income based on like a content creator's content. If they do stuff outside of the site that we don't like, like we're involved in that and we'll take your stuff down. Well, that's why they bag Milo. They had no complaint about his content, but he was a known associate of uh, Gavin McInnes. Yeah. And I, he didn't, he didn't even, as far as I know, like put anything on Patreon. It was just like, he put it up and then they just went, I don't know. And they took it back down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, the whole thing is selectively enforced. And I think that uh, mm-hmm. that applies on all platforms. I mean, they have their little bots and their algorithms that'll is, you know suss out keywords and shit. But then at the same time, you know, there's God knows how many squads of pinheads who are just combing through this shit and saying, "Oh, that I don't like that. That's that's gone." Now, I, I did a I did a show after the Parkland um, shootings, and I was mm-hmm. rip shit as the country was, and the the title of the show was. The Parkland massacre was not a tragedy. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember you talking about yeah. this. I think on the Dick Show you were sort of talking about this. Yes, and I was I was furious because and so I did a, a, a little sort of summation video and posted that on YouTube, and yeah. the thing got twenty six views and it was demonetized instantly. And why? I mean, and I thought, what, what the fuck? I mean, I, 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 there were no, I deleted all my four letter words and fucks and shit. So there was no violence. There was, there was nothing. Yeah. All it was, was they didn't like what I was saying. And what I was saying was, yeah, it's not a tragedy. First of all, it's an atrocity. That's different. Yeah. Okay. A, you know, a tragedy is something that is uncontrollable. An atrocity is some maniacal fuck behind it. And those cops were a part of the problem. That was undeniable. Yeah. And they didn't like that, so it went away. 
And at the same time, as soon as I looked at that, I said, holy, this is beyond belief. And I started you know, surfing around on YouTube. And I mean, in 30 seconds, I'm looking at a video of some guy blowing a fucking horse's head off. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Look at, look at anybody, any rapper's um, lyrics, you know, Lil' Kim to, you name it. I mean, I mean, the, the, the amount of misogyny, I mean, you, you, every everything offensive you could possibly fucking imagine is packed into those videos, visually and in text and they're all we spent a lot of time just like talking about youtube and their policies and it just <laughs> at this point it doesn't make any sense we just have to accept that it sucks it makes no fucking sense and the more time we spend talking about it the more confused we get yeah i mean your your case uh reminds me I, either we were talking about it on this show or someone on youtube was talking about it and it made me think that i was talking about it I was one, gonna of the, say, one of the two what? <laughs> um <laughs> But there's that issue of like certain people are allowed to talk about things. And then if you're smaller and you talk about it, like you're just you're you're demonetized because right. you can't talk about these issues like smaller news channels that have, you know, a, a million followers can instantly get demonetized because they don't have all that much money. But if CNN wants to do 24 hour coverage of it and, you know, display the 24 hour coverage on YouTube, like they're allowed to. And they're allowed to add all their stupid opinions. Mm -hmm. Like all the late night hosts have all these bits that don't get demonetized. But someone like, uh, let's say Philip DeFranco, because he's the only person I can think of right now. Like if he talks about something like the Parkland shooting, like he might get demonetized mm -hmm. because he just doesn't have as much money and as much power right. as like universal. Mm -hmm. Basically what it comes down to is you can say whatever you want. If it's during a carpool karaoke segment on uh, <laughs> whatever that guy show is. Yeah. I don't know. Dude, what if I bet if like that guy like said the N word or something, <laughs> honey, like no, nothing would happen to him because it's no. like, Oh, yeah, this, this video will make about 30 million views right? from candy-brained idiots. Mm -hmm. Like he's singing carpool karaoke, and he just, like, he sings, just, like, <laughs> he sings he the N-word. He doesn't bleep the word out. <laughs> and, like, there's nobody else in the car just, like, they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, Patreon, you know, I, I, I wonder about this kind of stuff. I wonder how far it'll go down. Um, I'm waiting for us to get taken down eventually when we get too big. Yeah, well, if we... No, I'm just kidding. We will. <laughs> That's a promise. Uh, Nico in the chat here says uh, musicians get false copyright claims from music giants for their own original music. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Well, yeah, maybe I've you guys saying... know. I've asked several people and no one can say for sure. What Who is the, the process? Whether it's YouTube or Twitter, or Facebook. And my sense of it is this. Some yuts, whether it's a staffer at YouTube or just some surfing mindless zombie, sees something by you guys or The Dick Show or mm -hmm. anybody. And, oh, this is offensive. And then flags it as being whatever the charge is. And I, it seems as if they instantly... Um, remove or, or put put the brakes on whatever that content is without investigation and then they go back and maybe look and make some kind of a decision is that how it works i'm willing to say that uh it's probably one step further i think that it's 100 percent automated from everything i've seen because this stuff happens like almost instantaneously like people will upload private videos to their channels that get like demonetized immediately and it's like nobody's even seen it but what would trigger that is there's got me I mean, are, are the bots smart enough to actually comb through audio and make a determination that way or I mean, it, to me it's got to be something in the text of the title whatever you know what's what's triggering that what trips we've the had wire? some experience with that ourselves well yeah um and this is this is at, at least for music in particular because um when you upload music to YouTube, it will comb through the entire file. And if something gets matched up, it'll flag it right away. Hmm. Um, in terms of like spoken word stuff, maybe it has to get reported a couple times. But um, I think I think actually I, I watched a video where Monkey Jones was talking to a person who was like false flagging stuff. And I think that it's probably just raw number. Like if enough people like report something they just take it down hmm. so it's it's very confusing 
there's probably like a little more nuance to it, but I feel like the amount of YouTube support that is actively working in that type of stuff is just like completely like, I don't think that anybody's actually doing it. I think it's 95, a hundred percent like robots that are just Hmm. knocking stuff down and then they'll respond to it maybe later. But I even feel like the responses are like bots. Oh so. yeah. Oh, monkeys were, I, I saw, I watched some of yeah. his stuff and there's no question he was getting you know feedback from a bot. And then you try and appeal it and it's like, there's, there's nothing to appeal. Cause you're not appealing to like another person's sensibilities. Right. You're just uh, appealing to a robot. That's just like, Nope, you're doing hate speech. That's and he's right. like, no, it's, it's comedy. It, yeah. I I'm doing jokes. I'm making fun of a school shooter who deserves to be made fun of. Right. right. Nope. It's offensive. That's what do you mean it's offensive? It's offensive to the school shooter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say, man. I mean, I, I've always had a lot of respect for people who put their stuff out online and do things away from the uh, mindful eye of the gatekeepers and producers who used to be necessary to get things out to the public. And now it seems like, is that just going away? I think they're all back. I think all the gatekeepers are back. I think it sucks. It's unfortunate. It is. Yeah. But what's the punishment here? Let's, let's, (laughs) let's uh, be real nasty here. A new Patreon with uh, hookers and uh, hookers and blackjack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not exactly nasty, but I mean... It's pretty cool. It is it is pretty fucking cool. But let's move on. Sure. You guys you guys dance? You, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big dancer myself. And let me just say that uh, it is a good week not to be a dancer. Why is that? Because uh, Fortnite is a <laughs> very popular uh, free-to-play game. Uh, they're getting sued. By several people. So in the game Fortnite, from my understanding, is you can do these dances in the game. Like if you kill somebody or do stuff. Not only can you do them, but you have to purchase dances. That is such (laughs) bullshit. So you can, you buy dances for your character to do. So that's where some people's income is going. And uh, they're getting sued by a couple people. Uh, Alfonso Ribeiro. Yeah, that's uh, Carlton. Carlton yeah. yeah, so I guess the Carlton dance from uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air is in the game, which he, I guess, he has grounds to sue for because people are paying <laughs> money to use his dance that he made up. Hmm. Yeah, and I there's there's some talk, but this this is a pretty well known fact. Carlton like basically kind of took that dance from a Bruce Springsteen video where it's like Bruce Springsteen and the woman from Friends. Hey, he I should sue. Maybe he will. We'll see. Bruce Springsteen sues Fortnite. Larry, do you know what Fortnite is? You know, I I really don't. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of this, you know, lately, and I'm not a gamer, so it's like, you know, I guess it just blows by me. But you're not missing much. No. <laughs> you're lucky. But there's also, I guess, some backpack kid. That's how he's referred to. <laughs> back, backpack kid <laughs> sues Fortnite over the flaw stance. <laughs> Imagine if you told somebody this sentence uh, even a fucking year ago. That's that makes me so scared for the future. Like, what gobbledygook are we going to hear in a year from now? We're going to have to be like, that's news. Could you imagine just taking the entire past like two minutes of this show and like shooting it to like the year two thousand one and like, ah, yeah. uh, not safe, not uh, safe. Carlton is suing <laughs> Fortnite for stealing the dance, and so is Backpack Kid. You'd be like, what the fuck are you talking really? about? <laughs> For flossing, god damn! Uh, Backpack kid is the he's the he's the kid that he was in the Katy Perry video where he did he like originated the floss dance. He's the originator. Good for him. Mm-hmm. He invented it. Good. <laughs> Who gives a shit about this? Stuff? Tesla invented uh, what uh, alternating current electricity. Yes. And uh, Backpack Kid invents the, the floss dance. Floss dance. <laughs> well, yeah. So people are up in arms. They're upset about this. They're upset that this is happening. Fuck, they're upset about Ted Cruz's beard. <laughs> oh. It's just kind of... yeah. When, when you guys were kids, did you ever like take two bugs and put them in a bottle and watch them fight each other or something like that? Fuck that's yeah. Kinda what, that's kind of what this seems like. It's just like, well, let the bugs fucking kill each other. Yes. <laughs> when I was a kid, we called that Pokemon. Yeah, just let them fucking maul each other. I, it, so I don't know. But it, are, are, are Grant? Are you team backpack kid? <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. This is the worst. 
worst. This is the worst news story we've ever done. Uh, it's it's up there. This it's is definitely one of there. the worst ones. I feel like Fortnite has been sued a dozen times this year. <laughs> And the game's free, so I don't know where the money's coming from besides these dances that you can purchase. See, that's that's how they get you. The game's free, but then you see everybody else in the game dancing like Carlton or the Backpack Kid, and then you, you <laughs> and you want to put down your hard-earned cash and look like them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think um, I've never played Fortnite. I don't intend on it, but I think the sentence should be, I want my money back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I, I would like to file a claim. It's like, remember, remember when, like, Walmart was getting sued for something for Netflix or whatever? I don't know. Like, it's like a, cl- a class action lawsuit, yeah, yeah, but just by it, all of society. And we all get, like, 13 bucks in, like, five years for this. Cool. Yeah, I'll take it. And that's fine. Yeah, that's the punishment. Pay everybody. You, there's no telling who who did or didn't play this game, but everybody gets $13. Mm. Done. Let's move on. <laughs> I never want to talk about Fortnite on this show ever again. You probably will. <laughs> Kill me. Uh, let's talk about this one. I've, I think we talked about this like a year or two ago, and it sort of come back up. It's been stricken down. Uh, Sweden, a couple of years ago, had a man-free feminist music festival, mm. and the courts found them guilty of discrimination. Or oh, are they playing Wonder Woman in there? Good reference. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, you forget this stuff every you guys, Yeah, have you guys heard? They, I feel like they've done this in a couple different countries. Yeah. Maybe they've tried similar ones in America. There was the whole thing with Coachella and the amount of people that were getting, like, sexually harassed at concerts, which isn't a good thing. But then they were like, oh, we'll just get rid of all the men. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, courts are like, you can't really do that. Sweden, man. Well, and the (laughs) Boy Scouts are bankrupt, so so there. (laughs) Maybe uh, these music festivals are going to go bankrupt. Nikos is a bikini kill reunion show. I guess there was a man free thing for that yeah i read that I, story I and they it said like they even had like a man pen like for fucking cattle at that concert <laughs> for even for the roadies and the techies and shit like even treating them like they were animals you know get over here it's pretty fucking sick really because we're it's all weird. pigs man yeah. is it is it is it sort of like in uh you know, in like seventies movies, there's always like the go-go dancers in the cages. It was is it like that, but gender swapped? Uh, I don't know if the guys were in so. bikinis, but I think <laughs> <laughs> I think they were just drinking beer and looking sad, waiting for the show to be over. Yeah, Nico does say lower chance of uh, getting roofied. True. <laughs> I don't want to go to like a like a man-free feminist musical festival, though. You're, it sounds you, lame. You couldn't. I know, but I wouldn't want to. You're not allowed. You are not fucking allowed. I wouldn't want to. Have you guys? Well, if you did want to, you couldn't go. Have you guys ever? Uh, you, you, you guys are familiar with like the the uh, women's self defense seminars? <clears throat> yeah. Um, w- there was a martial arts class that I used to. Um, I used to take, but I also used to sort of like help my teacher out. I was sort of like the senior student. And, uh, sort of every, like the uh, teacher's pet, kind of. Except I'd get beaten up as a as an example. Oh. Um, <laughs> like I'd I'd always be like the guinea pig for like okay this is how we're gonna do this and then he'd like you know throw me to the ground and mm-hmm. be like okay now everyone else you know sort of thing. But in order to sort of um, garner more attention for the club, we do like a women's self defense thing, whatever, blah blah blah. All guys. Mm-hmm. A hundred, like mostly, huh? m- mostly men, because do you know who shows up to those types of things? Guys that are looking to get laid. Sure. Oh, so it's a hundred percent men. Dude. So can you imagine this like uh, man free feminist music festival? And it's just a hundred percent guys. Yeah. <laughs> They're all looking to fuck and no one's around. Hey, you know what? That is? <laughs> it may not be the worst tactic in the world. Now, did all Not a lot of competition for the women. Was it all like uh, scrotum strikes? Every one of them so <laughs> go for the balls. And then your teacher kicked you in the balls. Yeah, as an example to make an example out of me. Uh, we did more sort of like street fighting stuff. So at the very least, it was a little more applicable than like grab the person by the wrist and right. do whatever. It was like no, like 
fuck the person up sort of stuff. <laughs> Except it was, you know, a, a bunch of dudes. It's weird. That is weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess that's the sentence for this one. It's a bunch of, a bunch bunch, of creepy... A bunch of dudes. Yeah, a bunch of male feminists <laughs> showing up and like Nico brought up a, oh, Nico brought up something in the chat here. Uh, the chance of getting the chance of uh, getting roofied is off the charts because no one rapes more than a male feminist. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, they're going to be fucking each other, I guess. It's pretty gross. I don't know. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but what you the know. fuck? <laughs> All right, let's move on. What else we got? Uh, well, Christmas is around the corner, isn't it? God. I can't wait yeah. for it to be over. I know, right? Oh. I wish I could just take a break from Christmas really? for like five years. Yeah, you know, yeah. And you I, know, it should be, able be to like the Olympics, it. alternate every other year, every three years. Yes, really. that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, two ever two years, you got c- winter Christmas, and then you got the uh, two years later, you got summer Christmas. I'm good with that. Or is there another like ho- holiday we could alternate? Or are nope. we doing like the Christmas in July bullshit? Christmas in July. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. It's fine. That's a good idea. Well, guess what? Santa's in the news. What are you doing? That's right. You're not going to believe it. Uh, So apparently people are calling for a gender neutral Santa, Mm. uh, according to a uh, Daily Mirror article. I like that in in this uh, Google Doc where we put the outline, you just wrote Daily Mirror article, but you didn't link it. (laughs) I, I Why didn't you link I it? did that on purpose because okay. says uh, people say Santa should now be female or gender neutral, and it's sparking debate. Mm. But I was going through the comments on this, and pretty much everybody's unanimously like nobody want nobody said this. Like a lot of people are of the mindset that nobody actually said this, and this is like a red herring <laughs> just to make people mad at like PC culture or something. Yeah, I think that's possible. I don't. Again, I as someone who is all for the alternating Christmas uh, scenario we have here. I don't really care about Santa. I don't, I don't give a shit what he is. He's not real, Kevin. <laughs> Come again? He's not real. <clears throat> Zwick, edit that out. <laughs> just, you can you know, keep that in. Um, the people I, have to know. It wouldn't surprise me. Like, I f- I f- how many stories have we done where... It's such a small minority of people, and then you look to, like, what the original source of the outrage was, and there's, like, nothing. Yes. Yeah. It's, like, people exactly. talking about exactly. it. But nobody actually... Nobody started the fire. Right. You know? God, can you imagine... I know this is, like, sort of a trite joke to make, but can you imagine a Billy Joel song? About... About just a... Fortnite. Fortnite suit... Like, Fortnite lawsuit, gender-neutral Santa, uh, Tim Allen... I might do. I might do this. I might do this. There, you could do a new one each month. Yeah. The news these days. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh God. <laughs> Larry, what do you think about a gender-neutral Santa? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. Really? No. I mean, here's I, the th- about the same. I think about uh, Miss Universe with a cock. Um, Apparently, she didn't have one though. Oh, she was post-op. Yeah. Yeah. No. I. I'm not even familiar with this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised. I totally forgot about that. Um, there was a, I'm not, I don't think she won or anything, but there was a, uh, transgender woman, Miss universe contestant mm. post-op. Anyway. You know, I think it's just uh, like well, people, if I don't give a shit of how many Caitlyn Jenner's there are, people want to do that. God bless them. You know, follow your bliss. But there's this, this overarching, uh, thing now in, in, the, in the zeitgeist of, of we must impose our will on every fucking thing. Santa has to be a chick. Uh, Miss Universe has to be a dude. I mean, you know, Boy Scout, girls, Boy Scouts have to take Girl Scouts. It, it's, it's absurd. And w- where does it stop? Where does it end? Really? The thought cops have to be girls. Yeah, <laughs> right. You guys, <laughs> it out. next week it's going to be Mitzi and Titsy. <laughs> <laughs> Mitzi and Titsy, I like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. The only thing I'd have to say is, uh, uh, how hot is female Santa? That's a very good question. Does oh. he get the super crown from uh, <laughs> the the that <Bowsette laughs> super crown? Larry, that's a deep cut. I don't expect you to keep up with us on that one. That's a very cringy and embarrassing thing to have to go down a rabbit hole. But yeah. hey, I think that if Santa did put on the super crown, could be pretty hot. What's the super crown? Fe- 
Super Crown. Oh boy. <laughs> Long story short, uh, Super Crown turns you into a. Uh, a it's a. It's a. It's a video game thing where it. It's from the Mario games, and someone made fan art of what if Bowser put on Toad a puts crown. On, Toad puts on the Super Crown. Mm-hmm. The girl Toad puts on a Super Crown and turns into. Uh, a form of Princess Peach. So we're wondering, hey, if uh, if Santa put on the Super Crown, for example, would he turn into a, yeah. a sexy lady? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of dug myself into a hole there. I didn't really want to have to. <laughs> I'm sorry. You have, <laughs> I'm sorry you have to witness this, Larry. Yeah, Larry, I'm so embarrassed. Sorry. Uh, do you think female Santa keeps the beard or no? Do I think? Absolutely not. No. Uh, anybody. No, 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 no. no. Okay. But I will say that uh, female Santa... the. The beard may or may not migrate south for the winter. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if it's female Santa, now what about Mrs. Claus? Uh, Mr. Mrs. Claus, of course, is a, a buff gentleman. Ah, there we go. Baking cookies and such. I got it. <laughs> yeah. He's barefoot. Mrs. Buddy. Claus is... <laughs> he's, a, he's a male feminist. Yes. Yes, yes. And the elves, don't get me started on them. Mrs. Claus only drinks... Uh, oh. Soy milk and uh, vegan cookies. There you go. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> the, war, the war on Christmas is back on, in my opinion. You think so? I'm calling it right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lead the march. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, up until, uh, you know, who knows what. what. Oh, what's next? The Easter Bunny's not a furry anymore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. It is. War on Easter. That's, we need one of those. So like, yeah, let's pun- let's punish Santa. Um, I guess. Well, here's the thing: is apparently, like I said, the whole the whole reason I brought up this article was because apparently, <laughs> apparently, nobody actually wants this. <laughs> I can believe and that. And even people on whatever political side are like, this is just like you said, this is just some fucking bullshit that's meant to be divisive. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what's what, people's jobs are just, oh, what what's around the corner? Christmas. Let's come up with some bullshit headline that will make people argue and debate and this and that with each other. And then we'll get the clicks. We'll get the revenue. And, you know, we just want to keep you safe. Ah, so it's always goes back to safety. Absolutely. Yeah. Safe Santa. And, uh, there we go. Yeah, wrap him in a condom. Uh, <laughs> Larry, I'm sure, like, we, we talk about this, I feel like, every year, and I'm sure you've talked about it on your show, like, the amount of times we have to bring up the uh, the safety issue of whether or not it's okay to listen to that stupid song, uh, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Can we stop talking about this? <laughs> like, we've talked about this, like, three episodes now. <laughs> I even did an episode of that. Yeah, it, it just uh, every fucking Christmas. It's too much. It's just like there's nothing new to add. It's just like uh, I don't know. Exactly. Set, <laughs> set him up, knock him down, strike. Yeah, let's go. It's just it, so the the punishment here. Let's just come up. Maybe maybe instead of uh, changing Santa's uh, gender or whatever, let's uh, come up with a fun new mascot, like like a gritty for for Christmas. Some Christ. some ambiguous monster that nobody can relate to. That's not bad. Yeah, just like some fucking disgusting Cronenberg Muppet thing that it still delivers presents and still brings happiness to people, but it's a uh, disgusting, revolting, melting creature. And that's, this is gonna, this is gonna that's become Christmas. The, this is going to become the newest symbol for Antifa, how they still <clears throat> gritty. And now, they st- now it's going to be new Santa. There we go. You know, maybe you could so have anyway, a, a, some type of an antagonist character for santa which would really like a hamburglar be, type yeah yeah he either comes and he, he follows him around and steals the shit that santa leaves or vaporizes it or something and that's a great excuse for parents that really didn't you know come through for the kiddies with all the shit they wanted so you know well the uh, the anti santa was here and i mean this there's a pile of toys under this tree at midnight but i don't know what the fuck you know they're gone look at that that open window he must have come in there after santa and taken everything and then you, you can, you can this, the whole safety factor, too. Everybody can have something else to be afraid of. Anyway, this would have been really helpful back during like the uh, 2008 recession. Yes. People didn't have as much money for Christmas <laughs> presents. Like It was anti-Santa all along. Yes. This is basically what... Um, this is basically what like Krampus Shadow. is. No, Shadow not, Santa. Not Shadow. 
Krampus. Krampus. That's like what Krampus is. That right? is true. I, I, I think. I, think I, so. I know very little about him. What is Krampus? I, I, he... I have no idea. I just know it's like opposite Santa. Oh. I'm going to I'm gonna Google it. It's a movie. It had the best sound design. Central European folklore. Krampus is a horned anthropomorphic <clears throat> figure described as half goat, half demon. It's terrifying. And Krampus... Um, Oh, he would come by and he instead of taking away your presents, he would just like kidnap your kids, <laughs> slit them, hang them upside down, and slit them from their belly button to their chin. Yeah, apparently that's what it's disgusting. What's wrong with these people? It's well, Eastern Europe. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, cold winters there. I, th- I think mm. you're onto something though. Um, because Santa is such like a big figure for like capitalism and spending. Mm-hmm. What if the anti Santa was like the red menace and it was like a red gritty like character that took all your stuff and like evenly distributed it there you throughout go. the culture. Ooh. Worth like a shot. That? You let, let's uh, let's send the it. red menace. Yeah. Stalin clause. Stalin clause. <laughs> This week's Thought Cops Key to the City goes to Reddit user ThrowawayRandom3323. You may be wondering, who is this guy? Why did I pick him? Why does he get the uh, key to the city? Well, Sounds like a random throwaway account. <laughs> well, there's a reason. Uh, he, he, uh, posits the, he posits this. There needs to be a small dick acceptance movement before I even begin to give a shit about fat acceptance for women. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's a pretty uh that's a pretty brave take. <laughs> so I mean you know He's I, the hero of the week. <laughs> anybody that pushes for this is like making themselves a target. Yeah. Exactly. And and that's that's exactly why uh you know this mat this masked uh hero, you know, this is much like Batman <laughs> uh running through the shadows in the night, just uh for his it's like a Batman with a small dick. <laughs> and, and we, I, 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 I for one salute him. <laughs> the uh, the uh, for, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a it's been a week, what, folks. What, what what body part are you saluting him with? <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know. That depends. Does he have the super crown on or not? No, are you guys anyway. on Reddit or not a lot? I'm not a Reddit guy. Grant, you are. I flip through it, and it depresses me, and then I close <laughs> out, and then I refresh the page, and I flip through it again. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you use it a lot? I, do you use it a lot? I don't. Almost, almost uh, never visit. Yeah. But it seems, you know, pretty popular. This, this wasn't you, Larry? <laughs> no. <this was> <laughs> I never use it. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. Interesting. You sure know a lot about the website. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it, it's it's the great aggregator. Yeah. I guess. I guess. I never, I just don't, I, for some reason, what always uh, pushed me away from it was how it looks. Yeah. It's so. It's fucking ugly. It really is. Yes. Yeah. It's a simple display. Just, uh, just one line. You can click up, you can click down. That's it. Didn't the guy that invented it, uh, he killed himself, right? Oh, yeah. One of, one of the, uh, yeah, one of the main founders did. That was uh, a number of years ago. Yeah. yeah. Probably after he saw On another done. note here. Uh, this, this week's Thought Cops word of the week is Woot. Woot. That's spelled W zero zero T. This is something people don't really say anymore. But we didn't have anything else this week. <laughs> uh, woot, spelled with a double zero, is a slang interjection used to express happiness or excitement, usually over the internet. You still have in the chat, uh, leaving off with a woot. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. So uh, get those woots going in the chat here, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I hate this. Let's bring it back. Anyway, uh, Larry, let's do some plugs here. Where can we find you? What's going on? What's the deal? Hey, um, (laughs) every Tuesday and uh, Sunday, um, Sundays at Sinner's Sunday, Tuesday, That Larry Show, both at thatlarryshow.com. And uh, that's it. And I, I, I always love your, um, who, do you do the thumbnails for your episodes or does someone else do them? I, I do everything. Oh, they're so funny. I love all of the thumbnails Thank for you. every episode. Thank they're you. so great. Thank you very much. And Absolutely. The, the chat here has been uh, complimenting your sultry tones as well. <laughs> so if, if you're looking for a nice, relaxing time, listen to that Larry show. Thank you. So let's get on to our uh, final 
dock it here. Uh, listener voicemails, of course. You can leave your own at 312-788-7361. Here we go. Hey, cooktops. Come on. Oh. need to rest. People who come into a place of business or call into a place of business two minutes before they fucking close. Holy shit. Like, especially, like, if you know, like, when they close and you do it anyway because you're such, you're so fucking important. You need to waste some fucking wage cuck time because you just can't wait till the next day because you're a bitch. Fuck you if you do that. I, I am I'm very, guessing this sounds like it's fresh from experience. Like that her. very well may be. <laughs> <laughs> That's everyone's favorite caller. She's cool. So I, I'm very conscious of this uh, ever since I first had a job at 16. It was yeah. never do this. Don't go. If it's like the place closes at 9 and it's 8.55, just don't go. Yeah. yeah, or if like a restaurant closes at like 3.00. Don't go in at like two thirty. Like, just give give them a break. Go somewhere else. You know, right? They're the same guys that want to order off the menu, right? Yeah. yeah. What was it's your disgusting. first job at sixteen? I worked at a arcade bowling alley mini golf place, and the, <laughs> uh, my boss threw a computer chair at me. <laughs> <laughs> Not the greatest. Uh, what about you, Larry? Oh my God. Uh, well, I was a <clears throat> I was a kid actor. My first job was at age three. Um, and then I, you know, but I guess my first straight job, what the hell would that have been? Um, oh yeah, so I, I, not- I was, I, I spent a summer, uh, scooping ice cream at a Baskin Robbins. That was pretty awful. Mm. Yeah. I was really sick of it, ice cream after about three days. Yeah. I could never get sick of ice cream. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I'm sure if I worked there for yeah. long enough. Oh yeah. Uh, one, one of my later jobs, um, I worked at Starbucks and like. You you try all of like the the sugary ones and then like just black coffee after that because everything else is so disgusting. All of the sure. frappuccinos and shit, you, you get so sick of them. They're so gross after a while. Anyway, that just about does it. Thanks again for listening. You can support the show yourself at patreon.com slash thought cops. Uh, you can be part of the chat. You can do- listen to our bonus episodes, Fire Bros, which uh, we got a new episode of that, too. That just came out. Yeah, that's right. Check so, it out. Uh, we, you know, it's a whole other show. It's a whole other ball game. Uh, who's who wants to play? Anyway, I'm tired as fuck, <laughs> and the things I'm saying are not making sense anymore. Larry, thanks so much for coming on the show. Hey, yeah, thanks, thanks for guys for in. having me on. I had a blast. Love your show. And Absolutely, it's been a lot of fun. Absolutely, Thank you. yeah. Call back in anytime. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>